I was able to get concert tickets to see Bryson Tiller tonight! Literally the entire music industry is beefing Drake. It's my food. The girls are out to play. I wish I had better things to say, but I don't. And I found it! I found it! know how much I love an unboxing and today I have a jewelry partner to share with you guys I am so excited you guys know how much I love jewelry and today I have two pieces from Italo jewelry and I am so excited to share these pieces with you okay so let's get right into it so the first piece I have ooh, look at that packaging so this is a bracelet. I will have everything linked down below for you guys. It's been wrapped in this plastic, so you know. It's brand new, okay? So this is the Golden Pear and Round Cut White Sapphire Bangle Bracelet. This is made from 925 Sterling Silver. I have some sapphires in here as well. Ooh, look at that, you guys. Isn't that gorgeous i had to send them my measurements so i'm pretty sure that all the pieces from italo are handmade so this bracelet is made from sterling silver and the stones are sapphire so just look at that get closer Ooh, that is so pretty it has a really nice weight to it i don't know what it is with me i measure things and then they come and then they're a little too big okay so you can actually adjust this great so you can make it a little bit tighter so that is perfect. Look at the detail on that, you guys. It is so, so beautiful, the detail on this. And then second piece, I got myself a tennis necklace. Again, sealed, handmade. This is the 4.5 millimeter round cut tennis necklace in sterling silver. I'm like a kid on Christmas day, honestly. Oh my God, this is shining 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 yeah okay you know like in movies when like your man gives you a tennis bracelet it's always like slow motion and you're like oh my god babe you shouldn't have it's so beautiful <laughs> okay guys so this took forever to get on but i finally did and it is stunning so pretty bling 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 this is mad <laughs> Okay, so about Italo Jewelry, they offer a 60-day return policy on all of their pieces, and all their pieces also come with a one-year manufacturer's warranty. Every single piece came with all of this paperwork. We love to see it. Verification that it is 925 sterling silver, some sort of testing. I mean, the quality the quality is there okay i will have links below as well as a 20 percent off code if you want to shop with italo jewelry let me know what you guys think about these pieces and of course thank you so 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 much to italo jewelry for working with me on today's video <laughs>
another weekly vlog you guys and happy Tuesday. I've had a really full on day even though it looks like I've done absolutely nothing today. I've been to the gym, I had my French lessons, I've edited a video, I'm actually uploading what I think will be my first midweek upload in a couple months so I'm really excited. If you've missed it, please go check it out. I talked about the biggest mistake I've ever made with my micro locks. Especially if you have micro locks, I think you'll find that one useful. I wasn't actually sure if I was going to start the vlog right now, but I got a very exciting package. So here we are. <laughs> I have not done a luxury unboxing this year. Yeah, I don't think I have. So if you guys watched my luxury wish list for 2024, you already know that I mentioned that I didn't really have a lot of things on my luxury wish list. Like this was not the year for me personally to prioritize luxury. I had a lot more important things that I wanted to spend my money on. A lot of which has been investments into my channel, which if you've been here for a while, you would have noticed like I got some new filming equipment. I got a new Apple display. And honestly, I was chilling. I was not meant to do any personal shopping. And then I made the mistake of one day randomly googling something that's been on my wish list for about a year at this point and this is something that I've been waiting to go on sale for over a year and I found it I found it doing unboxings when you can't show your address looks legit to me so far so good I'm being super critical because I bought this from a website that I've never heard of before so this is a little weird only one of the arms was protected so I finally got them in white and honestly guys I need to do a comparison between these they feel legit they look legit but I got them from this website that I've never heard of before and I figured I would take the risk because I already have two pairs to compare it to. I actually bought these for 290 pounds. If you remember when I got my black ones from John Lewis, they were the exact same amount. But on this website, I was able to get 10% off. So I think this will actually be my most affordable pair out of the three that I bought. You guys know I have these in black, white, and tortoise shell. If you don't know, well, not you know, I have them in white, black, and tortoise shell. So this color has been the hardest color to find on a sale honestly like the quality of them feels exactly the same the website did say that they were real and i kind of feel like if you're going to sell fake things and be so bold as to have a website like a legit website and advertise on google ads because that's how i found them you'd have to be really really bold all the accessories are the same the only thing i noticed that was a little bit weird was that one of these was missing let's see hmm I don't think these are real when you look at the logo it's so obvious I knew it was a risk to be honest so I purchased them with my credit card so I already know like if anything happens my credit card will protect me but if they were like a hundred pounds or something I would be like okay yeah that price is too good to be true but because it was roughly around the same amount that I paid for my other ones I thought it was just on sale all right so i'm going to go face this problem now <laughs> i was so excited oh my god like i'm not against dupes like you guys know like i i don't i'm not against dupes but i draw the line at buying fake things i did search on trust pilot before i purchased from any new retailer and this retailer only had like 10 reviews so it wasn't really it was definitely a risk so yeah such a fail i'm so upset but these are going all the way back. <laughs> Hey you guys, what's today? Wednesday, yes it's Wednesday. I am heading out, I'm gonna go to have lunch with some of my friends, so we're going to this West African, actually I think it might be Nigerian restaurant called Chishiru, I think. So this is what I'm wearing, it's super casual. I just have this um, crop jumper from Zara. I have these light blue jeans from Abercrombie. And I'm also wearing 
the brown cowboy boots that I got from TK Maxx, originally from Massimo Duty. And I'm taking, <laughs> this is turning into my everyday bag, my Abercrombie and Fitch, no, my Anthropology Jody bag. So this is the outfit, this is my first time wearing the shoes, so I'm really nervous that they're going to rub. But I think that this is the best jacket that I have in terms of tones because it's cool toned in it. The whole outfit really, except for the jeans. Actually the jeans are quite cool toned as well. At least I would describe them as cool toned. So what do I need to take in here? I need my sunglasses. I want to take the brown ones. I also need to take my lip combination. So my lip combination today is Charlotte Tilbury Pill Talk Intense. And then I'm wearing this. I can't remember what it's called. I'll put it on the screen. And then I have Fudge Me, look at all these, <laughs> Fudge Me Butter block Gloss um, Creme Brulee in the middle. And then this clear one on top. So it's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> I'm going to do these two. Atrape Rev and Delina Exclusive. I need to leave like, I think I just did something to it. Ooh, this combination is pretty. It's very springy. And then I put all of my sample perfumes in this little thing so that I always remember to take something out with me. I think I'm going to take some perfumes, the Marley one. So I have Oriana and I have, what is this? Darley. I'm going to take those too. <laughs> You know when you're tired but you can't get into bed because you still have somewhere to go? That's me. That's me right now. Let me put you over here. This might be a better angle. I was able to get concert tickets to see Bryson Tiller tonight! Oh. Guys, I'm so excited. I love Bryson Tiller, like, so, so much. They must have released concert tickets when I was in Nigeria because I had no idea about this concert. And by the time I found out about it, of course, it had already sold out. So I've been on StubHub for weeks trying to get tickets. To be honest, there have been tickets available for sale on StubHub for ages, but they were just really expensive. I felt like people were really trying to like 3X and 4X the price on StubHub, and I was like, absolutely not. I like Russ and Tiller, but I don't love them that much. <laughs> Miriam and I are actually going tonight. I was able to get us two tickets, and I think the seats are pretty good for the actual face value of the ticket. I think one trick up on StubHub is if you wait until the day of the concert, people will be slashing ticket prices. So these seats that I was looking at yesterday were like 200 pounds for two tickets. And today I was able to get them for 100 pounds for two tickets. I want to talk to you guys about Chishiru. I wish I had better things to say, but I don't, unfortunately. Chishiru is a West African inspired restaurant. The main chef is actually from Nigeria. She's from the north of Nigeria. We met her. She came around at the table and we were done eating. Super like friendly, warm, down to earth vibes. The restaurant itself is really, really pretty. It's in Good Street, which I think is not too far away from where our cocoa is. Because I've actually done the tasting menu at our cocoa, I was really underwhelmed by Chishiru. In my humble opinion, the food at our cocoa is so much better. And I don't even think our cocoa has a Michelin star. So the main reason why we went to Chishiru is Miriam's really like into restaurants and like fine dining and stuff. So she had found out about this restaurant and that they had just got a Michelin star 
and they were going to be reviewing their prices so she was like we should go now before they increase the prices so we went we did the lunch tasting menu it was 50 pounds for three courses so the first thing we had was this fermented rice cake thing was also this okra akara thing honestly i think we all kind of agree that that was like a four three out of ten neither of them were great like i would not rush back to order any of those again and then for the starter there were three options one was vegetarian and two were meat options i ended up getting the asara which is meant to be a yam porridge with fish you guys would have seen it in the cutaway i didn't eat it <laughs> like I didn't like anything about that dish. Asara is meant to be a spicy yam porridge. That was not spicy. It was kind of cold. I didn't like the texture. <sighs> I really don't want to like go in too much, but I didn't like it at all. Mariam and Uju got the guinea fowl, which I, in hindsight, I wish I had just got that. That was better, but again, we all agree that that was like a five out of 10. And then the jollof rice was actually quite good. The jollof rice for me tasted like a very typical jollof rice. It almost kind of gave me like a nice like blend between Ghanaian and Nigerian jollof rice. I liked it, but again, I wouldn't rush to go back. I've been to a few Nigerian like fine dining restaurants here in London. And I feel like a cocoa is the only one that put a spin on the jollof rice. So it was different. I'll link the vlog when I went to Our Coco. I feel like with Our Coco, you got an interpretation of food that you couldn't get anywhere else. Whereas the jollof rice at Cheshire, even though it was good, I feel like it tastes like jollof rice that you would get. Like, you could make it at home. <sighs> I'm really slating this restaurant. I feel really bad. Oh my god. The dessert was not for me. It was ice cream with peanuts. So, two things I can't eat. Lactose intolerant don't do well with nuts <laughs> and then the crisp thing at the top was this um coconut flake and I was really excited about that bit into it and it just was super greasy and I couldn't eat it so and then I got a drink the drink was literally a glass full of ice and then the actual cocktail was half of the glass I don't know whose idea that was for presentation but I really didn't like that like don't give me a half filled glass and tell me that's how it's supposed to be like put it in a smaller glass or put more drink in it because that just felt like a rip off from the very beginning and then when i tried it it just tasted of coriander and again all my friends tried it and was like no so i sent it back and luckily they didn't like give me a hard time i didn't have to pay for it but all in all guys i don't know if it was because we did the lunch menu or what but i i'm so sorry like i really wanted to like it but maybe i need to go again i'll, I'll put it that way we did the lunch menu very limited options i would like to believe that if we didn't do the lunch menu and we could like order a la carte there would be better things i mean obviously they have good food they just got a michelin star but unfortunately it just wasn't for me it just wasn't for me. I'm ready for the concert. Ooh, the girls are out to play. I'm still trying to get used to wearing my hair up. Well, this is what I did. I just touched up my makeup a little bit and made it a bit, I don't know guys. I'm, I just published my micro locks video and so many of you guys said that you like my hair up, but between me and you, <laughs> I think I'm gonna put it down, I don't know. I like it up because I think it looks different, but I still feel like it looks better down. The thing is it's not quite long enough, my hair as well. So I think that also kind of makes it a bit awkward. In the back, there are lots of scragglers. We'll see how I get on. So this is what my face looks like. I just touched up my makeup. I added some eyelashes, you know, touched up a bit. And on my lips, I have the same lip liner same lipstick but i'm wearing the fenty fuchsia flex on top just a little bit so you can't really see it but it adds a little razzle and this is the look okay so this top i always forget where it's from i'll try and link it okay this skirt is from zara i'm wearing some nude tights and these boots are actually from primark I have not got any love because you guys know I just literally did not spend winter in this country so I'm trying to wear all of my winter clothes while there's still some winter and I really like the way this top kind of cuts into the skirt and it's the same on the back I'm going to be wearing this crossbody 
bag which is from sorry i know my head is kind of cut off but i'm rushing this bag is from william bean and i think the only coat i have that will kind of work with this look is my totem scarf jacket so oof, it's gonna have to be this santal blush by tom ford i've really been loving layering perfume so i'm going to go santal blush and delina exclusive yeah let's see how that pairs Ooh. yeah i think i made the right choice i'm gonna put some on my coat i want to get a picture tonight but i think it's going to be tricky Miriam's not the best at taking pictures i love you but it's true <laughs> I'm going to take a bougie ass to Rodeo. Please let me just make a disclaimer. I'm not one of these new Bryson Tiller fans that have just clocked in because of TikTok. I am a genuine Bryson Tiller fan, okay? I've been a fan since Trap Soul since 2015. And just let me not get too excited. I'm still a bit worried about my concert tickets because I've never bought concert tickets on um, what you even call it, StubHub. So... We're gonna see. Doors opened at 7.30, but I think I've kind of finagled that the artist doesn't go on till around nine. And I don't really wanna be hanging around. So, well, till like an hour and a half, I feel like, before the artist actually comes on. So hopefully I've timed it right. So yeah, I'm gonna go down and try and get a picture and hopefully I see you guys at the concert on my phone. Put them hit a zone south, please. Hoping someone 
today for the first time in months and when I tell you that class kicked my okay like, I was just so out of it oh if you're wondering what's going on I had my hair prepped for a wig first time wearing a wig I'll talk more about it like when I tell you about the wig but I don't know if that's gonna be in this vlog or next vlog anyway ignore this we're gonna sort it out I wanted to quickly show you guys everything I got from m and I want to pick up a few things after my class. I've had these a few times. They're so good. These are the, these high-protein bagels, and they're 15 grams per bagel. I don't know how. Okay, apparently it has yeast, yeast protein in it. 217 calories per bagel, and apparently 15 grams of protein which is very, very good. I feel like that's actually better than the regular bagels I used to get. So yeah, these are good. If you have an M&S by you, try them out. If they don't have a weird texture or a weird taste to them. So I got that. I also got some apple juice. This is for my um, protein shakes. I got some organic apples. Honestly, I don't usually shop at M&S. M&S is expensive but i decided to treat myself today <laughs> so i got this some protein um some soya milk not protein soya milk they have these very large eggs which are literally ginormous well not ginormous but they're pretty big and i kind of think that i can have one of these and like a little bit of egg whites we're gonna see how that goes i got some bananas these are ripen at home ones because they were the most cost effective. I think I'm going to put this in my protein shake today because this banana needs to be used up. I got a melon because I think they're in season now. And it's one of my favorite fruits. Some easy peelers. Olive oil, which is honestly like I miss Aldi and Lidl. <laughs> Olive oil in M&S was six pounds. Let's not talk about it. They had this. This is I'm very excited to try this. I actually made some chicken korma yesterday, but I wasn't vlogging yesterday. So I'm going to have this with that and hopefully it'll be good. Why wasn't I vlogging yesterday? There was really no reason. It was just a sauce. It was honestly like a ready-made sauce thing, so it wasn't really worth showing you anyway. But yeah, I'm going to try that for lunch today. And I got some salted butter. Apparently this is 100% pure spreadable butter. So I guess liken that to a Kerrygold or a Lure Pack. I'm going to try this. I also got some coconut oil. This was £4.50, but it's organic apparently, so what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I, I knew what I signed myself up for when I went shopping at m &S. <laughs> Then I got some egg whites. I was really surprised that they even had this. This was like not that bad. It was like £3.50. And then I got some corn on the cob because it was just entering my eye, as they say in Nigeria. 
And I think that was everything I got. So not too much stuff in the grand scheme of things. And everything came to 40 pounds. Let's not talk about it. <laughs> I'm going to quickly make myself some breakfast. I have a to-do list as long as my arm today. it for the longest time like it's so rooted i hope you guys can see i really hope you guys don't fall over it's so windy so i'm going to need to do this really really fast okay um i'm gonna actually put you a bit flatter so that you don't topple over because i do not have energy for those problems so i don't even know what size this is but this was literally you probably can't even hear me this was the pot that it came in from columbia road flower market so i'm putting it in a 20 cm pot. Okay, that'll fit. And I just picked this up from a local shop. I need a scissors. I don't want to mess anything up. I think I'm going to pop this in here. I used to have gardening gloves, but honestly, I don't know where they are. I'm just gonna put the compost. Okay. All right. It's so rooted that I don't even know. I'm really nervous about damaging this. gonna have to cut the plastic because it's not coming out okay hold on let me try this Okay, I'm going to get some more compost around this. made me emotional <sighs> that plant
That plant is the one plant that made it. It's almost like a symbolization, like out of every single thing that I planted into my old home, this is the one thing that's still with me. And I'm taking care of it. I've been nurturing this plant for almost two years now and it's followed me literally <laughs> and there's just something about it that's like really symbolic i don't know why like I, I didn't i wasn't thinking about it while i was doing it but when i was done it felt really symbolic i've been needing to put this plant in a bigger pot for years and I just couldn't be bothered, couldn't make the time, got comfortable. And it's literally been falling over ever since I brought it here. It's been falling over in the corner, falling over in the corner. And finally, I made the time, I got the soil, I got a new pot for it. And <laughs> it just feels really symbolic. And this, if you guys have been in for a while, remember when one of the branches bent and I tried to use this stick to support it, to keep it up? It was a temporary fix. It didn't help because the leaf eventually died. But now that it's in a newer home, in a newer environment, it's bigger and better suited to its size. It should do a lot better. That's crazy. Am I reaching? Is that a word for somebody? Because it's a word for me. Wow. Anyway, hello guys. Should we do the dishes and I catch up a little bit? <laughs> Today's Sunday. I've been working all weekend, actually, not just today, all weekend. I vlogged a little bit yesterday, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna put it in the vlog or not. So if I don't put it in the vlog, what ended up happening yesterday was that I just went to Pilates, and that was my first time going to Pilates, like, since last year. So I'm super rusty, and I'm going to a new studio, and their style of Pilates is very different to any other Pilates studio I've been to, like they actually use like weights in their Pilates class. So I just think it's gonna take me a while to adjust and I don't really want to bring a camera <laughs> while I'm struggling, okay? So when I get good again, then I'll bring you guys. But other than that, I've just been working. I made a super long to-do list this weekend that involved a bunch of like, um, errands and chores that i've been putting off for ages oh lord i washed my makeup brushes and the fairy is still upstairs so i was saying <laughs> wash my makeup brushes i actually was going to order this iso clean spray because i heard that that's better for just like spot cleaning your makeup brushes which really i need to just get better at doing because i leave it off for so long to the point where it just becomes a nightmare but anyway um i washed my makeup brushes i filmed today just a partnership i actually need to film something for wednesday's video and i've left it so late to now it's going to be quite dark to film I don't know why I always do this, but the truth is, like, I didn't know what to film. Like, I've been struggling, <laughs> struggling for ideas of, like, videos to film that are not vlogs. I don't know, like, I used to do a lot of hauls, but again, I'm not really personal shopping at the moment. At least I'm trying not to. I used to do, what else did I used to do? A lot of luxury videos, which I'm not really doing at the moment. I don't know. I'm, I've been going on lots of people's channels as well, just trying to get inspiration on what other people are filming. But I don't know if it's just me, but I seem to be 
following people that also make vlogs. So outside of vlogs, like, I don't really know what to film. To cut a long story short, like I'm kind of struggling. So if you have any video ideas, please let me know down below. Like all the other people I used to follow for like styling videos, like they all just make vlogs. Like Mariana just makes vlogs now. I know that's just one person, but you know what I mean? Makeup tutorials never did well on my channel. Um, yeah, it's kind of crazy. I don't really know what else to film. I really don't. Let's just check in with you guys and say hi. Okay, see my marketing certification, French, YouTube. Like I have so much stuff at the moment, which keeps me really busy. To be honest like this weekend i really wanted to do a lot of like the annoying things i needed to get done in the hopes that next week i can just focus i think i might do some editing later actually because that's there's always stuff to edit so maybe i'll do that i was thinking about messaging my friend and seeing if she wants to go get a drink At the same time, maybe I can just edit. I have quite a bit of work I need to do, so... I don't know. I'll go through my TikTok and see if there's anything that I can find that'll be fun to do. Then maybe I'll do that instead. We'll see. If I pick you guys up again, that means that we went out. If I don't, that means that we did it. <laughs> Hi, guys. I was actually editing this vlog, and I realized that there's quite a few things I haven't, like put a pretty bow and made sense for you guys on. So first things first, let's talk about the Celine sunglasses that I unboxed at the top of the vlog. I'm not so sure that they're fake. I compared the ones I have to pictures that I could find online. And I think that the font, which is the main thing I was concerned about, the font does seem to look different from the ones that I have. I don't know if it's because they use a different font style on the white ones, I don't know. I know like the initial ones that came out were the black and the tortoise shell. So I don't know if like different batches have different fonts, I'm not too sure. But the font that's on the ones I received seemed to be consistent with the font that I could find on pictures online. Also, when I Googled like, what should you look out for for fake sunglasses, it said to pay attention to the hinges and the hinges seem to be the same on the ones I have. All the accessories that came with it seemed to be the same as the ones that I've received. So I wasn't sure. But when I reached out to the retailer, they just said they're genuine. But if you're not happy with them, you can return them and we'll give you your money back. Which to me, I kind of feel like maybe they are genuine. I don't know. <laughs> I intentionally left the name of the retailer that I purchased these sunglasses for out of the vlog. Because I never want to bash a company if I'm not 100% sure about what I'm saying. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to either go into a store and compare them like physically with the ones that I have, or I'm probably going to order them from another retailer, like from Celine directly or something, just so that I can have, you know, a genuine pair in front of me and just compare. I don't really want to charge my card with like several hundreds of pounds and then wait for the money to go back onto my card. So I'm kind of leaning more towards going into the store but I just don't have the time to do that until later in the week so hence why I wanted to explain that just so you guys are not left waiting so hopefully we'll be able to figure it out next week I have two weeks to return these if I decide not to keep them so I have to decide what I'm doing this week so we'll see <laughs> in next week's vlog the second thing I realized when I was editing the videos that I never talked to you guys about Bryson Tiller Oh my god, like let me just tell you, besides like Beyonce, Jill Scott, Usher, a lot of concerts I, I went to, especially last year, because last year I went to so many concerts. Sometimes there are artists that can be quite underwhelming live. Um, You guys already know how I feel about SZA. I mean, love her. I feel like she is a great like album artist, but not the best live performer. And I was a little bit worried that Bryson might fall into that category. And let me tell you, he actually was way better than I thought he would be live. That's why I didn't want to spend too much on the tickets because I wasn't sure if it was going to be great or not. But honestly, I had an amazing time. He's not the best performer in the sense that he doesn't really like do much. Like there were two backup dancers, but I think 
he came alive with all the special effects. So there were um, fire machines, smoke machines, the DJ, the sound was amazing, the lighting, like everything kind of like made it so that it was visually interesting. And I think what really set it apart from other artists that I've seen live, like an Ari Lennox or a SZA who I didn't necessarily enjoy the concert experience as much, was the audience oh my gosh we really lucked out with the people that we were sitting next to everyone around us was so hype even just like seeing the audience like in the pit like on the ground floor that was standing like three people ended up fainting and security had to take them out like the energy was just so intense i don't even know how they were coping because it was so packed down there and then of course all the fire and everything would have made it really warm like sometimes these concerts can be quite cold and it was really really warm i actually wish that i had worn a different top because i was actually sweating at some point but yeah it was an amazing concert you know a concert's amazing when you buy merch like i was just i had to buy it like even though this is not my favorite rice and tiller album this is the latest one i just had to buy the t-shirt it was at the ovo arena at Wembley. Tell me why when we came out of the concert they had like all these like street vendors selling merch for half the price that I bought my t-shirt for inside. I was so annoyed. Like merch in general is very overpriced. Like I paid £35 for this t-shirt. It's not the best quality, blah blah blah, but it's supporting the artist so fine. But still, I was just like, if I had known I would have kept my £20. These were £15 outside of the venue. So that was very, very, very annoying. What else happened in this week's vlog that I wanted to update you guys on? I've been wearing bonnets a lot this week because I have my hair in these braids that I was telling you guys about. I actually retied my hair this week. I didn't vlog on that day, primarily because my loctician doesn't really like recording. Like the few times I've tried, I've kind of got the vibe that she was uncomfortable and I never ever want to make anybody uncomfortable so I just didn't bother. But when she retied my hair, she also braided it down because I'm working with a wig company which you guys will see in next week's vlog. So on a day to day, like I'm pretty much just wearing bonnets unless I'm going out and wearing a wig but because I can't like show you guys the wig in this week's video, <laughs> there's a lot of footage that didn't really make it into this week's vlog because it just wouldn't have made sense with the hairstyle. So this is like, content creator talk that's of no interest to any of you guys but speaking of partnerships and content creator jargon i feel so blessed and so honored and so grateful to you guys that these brands even want to work with me but a free way to support the channel outside of like liking and subscribing of course would be to just engage so please check out my description box and check out links and like click on links like these things really really help and if you like anything like use my discount code to purchase them if you do end up like supporting any of the brands that i've promoted on my channel Please let me know what your experience is down below because that would also be really helpful for me to know like in the future if I should work with these brands again. So the last thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is the... <laughs> I feel so funny because obviously at the Bryson Tiller concert they were playing a lot of J. Cole and Drake and it really kind of made me... and Future and it just made me think a lot about the beef and the fact that I haven't talked about this at all on my channel. Like I've talked about it a bit on my Instagram but not at all on my channel. If you guys don't know like I find like these sorts of things really interesting because I love hip-hop and I'm a very 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 big Drake fan. Like everyone that knows me in real life thinks I like 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 fancy Drake and I don't. I just love his music like most women and I feel like it's really funny how this particular situation has come about because literally the entire music industry is beefing Drake. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I will actually link this guy's channel down below because he does such a great job of breaking down like the beef and the diss tracks and everything. So many of my friends have like come to me to be like, can you please explain to me what's going on because we have no idea what's happening. So I will give you guys a little bit of a rundown in case you have no idea. So basically, Drake used to be cool with Kendrick Lamar, Future, like everyone that's beefing him, Rick Ross, <laughs> The Weeknd, like every single person that's beefing him right now, he's at some point been cool with them they've worked together they've done collaborations they've had successful collaborations like number one songs together and there seems to be a theme of like people like liking drake and then not liking drake like rihanna serena williams like so many people to the point where i'm like starting to feel like drake must be the problem which is why i put that caveat by saying that i like drake's music i think he's super talented but clearly there's something about him that irks people or rubs people the wrong way, 
or upsets people. It can't be that everyone's jealous of you. If there's a pattern to the point that the entire music industry is beefing you, you need to reevaluate and see what it is that you're doing. Having said that, I do think it's really, really lame that everyone's ganging up on him and collaborating. Now Kanye today released his own diss track. Well, he jumped on the diss track that Future, Metro Booming and Kendrick put out towards Drake. So he's now remixed it. So clearly he's siding with all these other people now against Drake. And I don't know, it's difficult for me because I'm a fan of every single person that's involved in this beef. Like I love The Weeknd. I love Future. I'm not the biggest Kendrick Lamar fan, but I like him. I also like J. Cole. I like Rick Ross. Like I'm I'm literally a fan of every single person. Like when Drake was beefing Meek Mill, I don't care about Meek Mill, so I didn't really care. Same way I don't care about Pusha T, so I didn't really care. But it's difficult when you are a fan of everyone involved. So let me tell you, like I listen to like that pretty much every day, especially when I'm at the gym. I think that is an amazing song. Even Rick Ross's um, response track, even though I feel like Rick Ross is just and went by and jumping into it for clout. It's not a bad song when you actually listen to it in its entirety. Some of the clips that made it to the blogs are a bit lame, but the song in itself is actually a really good song. And I'm loving Drake's response. Like I think Drake's push-ups, like he really, oh my gosh, you have to listen to the breakdown of that song if you want to know like line by line what each song means. Cause I think so many people don't actually understand the way Drake raps. Like every single line in a Drake rap especially in a diss track, it's usually like a play on words, like a double entendre. And even for me, I miss so many things. So I have to go and listen to the breakdowns. And honestly, this is the stuff I like hip hop and rap for. I just think it's really, really interesting and it's fun. But a part of me is really hoping that like, this isn't serious. A part of me is really hoping that they all work it out because more than anything, I love all, every single person involved musically. And I think that every single person, whether they want to admit it or not, benefits from them working it out more than they would benefit from there being beef. And what I mean by that is a world where there's no more future and Drake collaborations, I think is sad. Rick Ross for a fact should be worried because literally every single hit he has is a, has a Drake feature. So he just needs to like sort this out as soon as possible. Drake for me, I feel like is such a great artist because he's able to really, like he's, he, he's such a chameleon musically and I think that's possibly why he's the best in my opinion at what he does because he can work with anybody and make it fire so these people that he's beefing with like they're all like the best of the best so it would be really unfortunate if he like never collaborates with any of these artists again and over what you know what I mean like when I actually did my research and drilled to the root of what this beef is at least between him and Kendrick it all stems from like them wanting to be the best I just think that's really stupid Future and everyone else apparently their beef is like over women which again I just think is come on like all of you guys have so many women like why is it important in the grand scheme of things i just think that drake is a menace and drake will sleep with everybody like that's honestly what it's sounding like and that in itself is very worrying and disturbing and again is another reason why i don't rate drake as a person <laughs> i just like his music i have to keep saying that because the number of people that love to tell me about every single cringy thing drake does like i don't support a lot of what he does outside of music okay like i feel like i have to always say that but i'm a huge fan of his music music and I would run to see him live like if he ever came to well wherever I am like I would run to go see him like this is the one thing that still haunts me to today I actually had tickets to OVO Fest when he was performing with Future this was a very long time ago like this was like maybe circa 2016 maybe even earlier and I couldn't go I couldn't make it out to Canada that year so I had to cancel but I still want to go to OVO Fest and the best thing about OVO Fest is he always brings other artists out which is another reason why I need them to sort out this beef because OVO Fest is like probably the one concert in the world where you can go and see the whole of Cash Money usually you can see Future usually you can see The Weeknd so I just need them to sort it out so that I can go honestly behind the scenes I talk about this beef like with every single one of my friends like on a daily basis so the fact that I haven't talked about it with you guys I just thought was funny so let me know what you guys think about it let me know what your stance on it is let me know what you thought about the vlog. Leave a comment down below. Give this video a thumbs up. Check out 
the links to Italo Jewelry, all the great things that you guys do to support me. I'm so grateful for all of you guys. I'm gonna say goodbye to you guys, but don't worry, this is a see you later, not a goodbye. I'll see you guys, God willing, in next week's vlog or come back during the week for a midweek upload. Bye. <laughs>